Aren't you glad you know who the King of Kings is this morning? Amen. Oh, go ahead and give him another hand clap of praise. That's my king this morning. Hallelujah. I love I love all of it, but I love that part where it says he is indescribable. Sometimes I just don't have the words in my vocabulary to tell you how good God really is. Uh, so I'll just say it in the simplest form that I know how to say it, and that, that, that and that is that he is good all the time, and all the time he is good. Amen. Hallelujah. Give the Lord one more hand clap of praise for that this morning. Praise team, if you'll come back around this morning, they're going to be singing a special song for you this morning, simply entitled The Blood, just before I break the word of God this morning. If it had not been for Calvary, if it had not been for the blood, if it had not been for Jesus, where would we be? Amen. Let this song minister to you as they sing this morning, and we'll be going into the word of the Lord.
following, Matthew 27 and verse number 15. If you're there, say amen. Now at that feast, the governor was wont to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would. And they had been a notable prisoner called Barabbas. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus, which is called Christ? For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. And when he sat down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with this just man? For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor answered and said unto them, Whether of the twain will ye that I release unto you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all said unto him, Let him be crucified. For a little while this morning, the Lord help us, the Holy Ghost anoint us, the saints of God pray. I want to preach to you on this question this morning. What will you do with Jesus? What will you do with Jesus? Would you set your hands toward heaven and let's pray this morning. Father, we love you today. We thank you for the Word of God. We thank you for Easter. We thank you that there is no longer a, a, a body in that tomb, but Lord, that is, it is empty this morning, and Jesus is alive and he is well. And Lord, he is sitting at the right hand of God the Father today, making intercession for each and, and every one of us in this place. Thank you, Lord, for the songs of Zion. Thank you, Lord, for the freedom of worship. Thank you, Lord, for the ability we've had to come into your house. And I pray this morning now that you'll anoint me, Lord, with that anointing that makes it effective. Uh, let our hearts receive. Uh, let our minds be focused. Uh, let us answer that question this morning. Uh, what will we do with this man uh, named Jesus? Thank you, Lord, uh, for bringing us together today. Uh, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Uh, and everybody said, Amen uh, and Amen. You may be seated uh, in the house of the Lord this morning. What will you do uh, with this man uh, named Jesus? What will you do with Christ? the King. As we are in the Easter season, as we are focusing on the death and bur the bur death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and I believe the question has to cross our mind, what will we do with this man named Jesus? I'm thankful today that Easter is not about Easter bunnies, it's not about eggs, it's not about chocolate candy, it's not about all of those things, but it is about the death, burial, and resurrection of my Lord and my Savior Jesus Christ. The most dramatic scene in history is that of Pilate when he was dealing with this man named Christ. If you were with us on Friday night, we tried our best to portray some of that through a drama presentation. Pontius Pilate, the governor, claimed to have had, to have had an autocratic rule over the Jews. For he asked Jesus, Know thou not that I have power to crucify thee and the power to release thee? Pilate thought he was all-powerful. And after conversing with Christ... Pilate was convinced that Jesus was innocent. Pilate was convinced that he was not guilty of any wrongdoing. Twice he said in verse number four and verse number six, I find no fault in him. Within Pilate's own heart, he was determined to release Jesus. He knew that the trial had been an unjust, unjust trial, for he knew that he had that they had envy in their heart when they delivered Jesus unto him. But Pilate, just like many of us, but Pilate, in his endeavor to shift responsibility, asked the people, what will ye that I release unto you? Who do you want? There is this notable prisoner named Barabbas, and then there is this man named Jesus, which is called Christ. Although Pilate has been convinced of the unspotted innocent of Jesus Christ, that he had determined to remain neutral and not commit. Many of us will find ourselves in that setting. We will remain or try to remain neutral, and we will say, I just won't commit to anything. I'm going to help you this morning to realize when you have that thought pattern, you're actually committing to something he did not want to entangle himself in the trial of Jesus Christ. But what he found out was 
his efforts to circumvent the question, in spite of his answers or his desire to avoid the duty, Pilate continued to find himself face to face with the unavoidable Christ. Although Pilate was convinced that Christ was innocent, although Pilate knew that he had nothing wrong with his life, he realized that he was being delivered for envy. Pilate had not the courage to acquit. Pilate lacked the strength and the courage to set him free. According to his own testimony, Pilate knew that it was within his power to do so. I'm reminded when Pilate said to Jesus, Do you not know that I have the power to release you and the 